Hello everyone. So, we will continue with the discussion on testing of functional and technical textiles. In this course till now what we have discussed first let us see we have uh, discussed the methods for testing of functional textiles, then we have started technical textiles. So, in testing of technical textiles we have first discussed testing of fiber reinforced composite material, then filter fabrics, then testing of geotextiles and today we will discuss testing methods of ballistic protective clothing. In ballistic protective clothing first let us try to understand what is ballistic protective clothing. So, in any material where impact resistance is the prime importance. So, those are related to high stress application. So, these are basically coming under ballistic protection. So, ability of a material to withstand failure due to stress which is applied at very high rate. So, that is known as impact. So, this impact resistance is very important for ballistic protective clothing. So, desirable property in many textile application this is not only for ballistic protection there are many other applications like body armor that we will discuss in this segment. Then impact resistance is important in mountaineering ropes, parachutes or many other areas. So, bullet proof vest which is coming under ballistic protective textiles is a protective clothing that can be made from different material which absorb the impact of projectiles that is bullet fire from weapons and explosive fragments fired at the body. So, this bullet proof vest has to protect us from all these impacts. So, this vest can be prepared from steel, titanium, ceramics, polyethylene or Kevlar. So, this vest do not actually deflect the bullet. So, we should understand that bullet proof vest are not supposed to deflect the bullet instead it should catch the bullet and effectively it should spread the force over a large area. So, that the impact on our body is minimized. So, as we are becoming civilized our threats are becoming more and more severe. So, therefore, the challenges lie in developing a material which will provide higher impact resistance while maintaining the weight of the 
total assembly at lower level. So, that is the challenge the severity of threats have been increased, but at the same time we expect our bullet proof vest should be of lower mass. So, there are broadly two types of body armors, one is hard body armor and another is soft body armor. So, first let us try to understand what are the basic differences. The hard body armors are those where metals and ceramic plates are inserted within the structure. So, due to this metal and ceramic insertion they are becoming rigid, they are heavy and all this hard body armors are used for military officers in the high risk region, because this hard body armors are meant for the high threat. So, these are basically used for protection against high velocity projectiles. So, in spite of all these advantages like protection from high threat, the main disadvantages of this hard body armors are they are hard, they are not flexible, they are heavy, it is difficult to handle, difficult to carry. So, they restrict the body movement. So, looking at all these disadvantages of hard body armors, soft body armors have been developed. So, these are basically multi layered oven or laminated fabric structure, typically they are supposed to be flexible and lighter in weight. So, they are relatively more flexible in nature than hard body armor, lighter in mass and they are used for routine wear of police officers and security personnel. This soft body armors normally do not use for high threat zone. So, they are providing protection against low velocity projectiles. So, main disadvantages of this soft body armors are we are looking at multi layered oven or laminated fabric which should be flexible, but 20 to 30 layers of this fabrics are required for sufficient protection. So, effectively this 20 to 30 layers makes the structure inflexible. They can be used only for low velocity impacts. So, where there is high threat, so we cannot use this soft body armors. So, in soft body armors the impact resistance that is protection depends on the properties of fibers, yarns and fabrics. So, we will see how the fibers, yarns and fabrics affect the impact resistance of soft body armors. So, here generally multi layered oven Kevlar fabrics are used. So, as 
we have discussed 20 to 30 layers are required. So, this structures become heavy and they become thick and inflexible. So, effectively they are uncomfortable to use. So, if we see broadly the difference between hard body armor and soft body armor, the hard body armors are rigid whereas, soft body armor are relatively flexible, hard body armors are heavy, this soft body armors are lighter, fabric structure combined with steel or ceramic plates insertion, whereas, in case of soft body armor we do not need any insertion, but here multi layered oven or laminated fabric structures are used. Hard body armors are used for military officers where high threats are there and soft body armors are used for police officers and security personnel. Hard body armors are meant for protection against high velocity projectiles and soft body armors are relatively low velocity projectiles. So, as the developments are going on the material requirement towards decrease in weight, we need lighter ballistic protective clothing but at the same time the cost is increasing. So, materials choice are also changing initially we use the glass composite then aramid composite and then ultra high module molecular weight polyethylene composite. So, gradually if we go towards glass to ultra high molecular weight polyethylene composites. So, weight is decreasing. So, main challenge lies in the developing a material which will provide higher impact resistance while maintaining the weight of the assembly at the acceptable level. So, that is the basic requirement. So, the requirements are in short better impact energy dissipation. So, the ballistic protective clothing should be able to dissipate the energy in a better way. The mass should be lower, so weight reduction should be there and it should be flexible, so that proper handle, proper comfort characteristics should be there. So, first let us see what are the factors affecting the impact performance of clothing. First factor is that that is a fiber, yarn and fabric related parameters. So, we have to select a proper fiber, then we have to decide the yarn structure, what type of yarn, then fabric structure we have to decide to control the impact performance and then projectile related parameters what type of projectile, what type of their tips are there, what is the angle of impact. So, these parameters also affect the impact performance of ballistic protective clothing. So, if we see the fiber and fabric parameters, these are the parameters like what type of fibers we do we use, what is the fiber property, what are the properties of uh, fiber, then twist in the yarn, what is the weave structure, 
then cover factor of the fabric, cream level of yarns in the fabric, friction between yarn in the fabric, numbers of layers, number of layers of fabrics used in the clothing assembly. So, fibers used are there are different types of fibers like paraaramid fibers, like Kevlar polyphenylene fiber, PBO fiber, ultra high molecular weight polyethylene fiber, inorganic fibers like carbon and glass fiber. So, these are you all these fibers which are used for making ballistic protective clothing. Then the properties of this fibers are all these properties which are extremely important for making the ballistic protective clothing effective like in fiber properties the fibers should have high modulus. Okay. Then high tensile strength, low density because we need mass should be low, it should be lighter, low elongation if it elongates, if its elongation is very high then the impact performance, impact resistance will be affected good resilience, it should come back from the deformation, low moisture retention. So, if the fiber retains moisture, then its mechanical behavior may get affected, high thermal stability should be there, because during impact there will be high temperature generation and if the fiber is not stable at high temperature, then the structure may get damaged and effectivity of the total clothing will deteriorate. Then high LOI value that means, it is burning behavior should be good, stability in extreme condition. So, in case of extreme condition, extreme heat or extreme cold condition, the fiber should be stable. After the fiber property, then yarn twist is also very important, reduction in yarn strength occurs when we apply twist that is very well known fact and also with the increase in twist angle the breaking elongation also increases. So, we have to create an yarn structure which has got high strength and low breaking elongation. Also with the increase in twist the modulus of yarn reduces. So, effectively the yarn which we use should be of low twist. So, reduction rate is very high at twist angle more than 5 degree. So, the twist angle should be very low effectively it should be less than 5 degree. Then comes weave structure. So, the structure of fabric it should be square fabric plain structure or basket weave are most common. So, plain basket they are most commonly used with the square structure and twill or satin 
some time is being used and all these structures are two dimensional structures. In addition to two dimensional structures sometime we use 3 D structures like angle interlock, warp interlock, orthogonal to enhance the impact performance of the clothing. Cover factor is extremely important characteristics. So, it should range between 0 0.6 to 0 0.95 that is the range. It should not be too high. If it is more than 0 0.95, then the jamming condition will be created and that will result yarn damage during weaving process. And if yarn damage takes place during weaving, so that will effectively affect the impact characteristics. And at the same time, if the clothing cover factor, that is cover factor of the fabric is reduced, if it is very low less than say 0 0.6, the fabric structure will be loose and in that case the projectiles will penetrate easily and the effectivity of fabric as far as impact resistance is concerned will be dropped. Next is crimp which is very important for ballistic protective clothing. We should have fabric with least crimp in yarn. So, if we increase the crimp so, projectile resistance will be reduced. So, as the crimp increases, transverse way deflection will increase, which will result blunt trauma. This blunt trauma measurement process I will discuss later in this class. Next important characteristics is friction. Friction is also very important characteristics and typically the frictional coefficient of 0.2 is the optimum value. As the frictional coefficient increases, the basic thing what happens due to increase in friction between yarn more and more secondary yarns will come into picture due to frictional contact and those yarns will take part in the resistance and absorption of energy. And if the yarn friction increases, yarn pull out energy will also increase. So, as the pull out force increases, the energy absorption will also increase, but if the friction becomes very high then the problem will be that the stress will be localized and that will result the yarn breakage okay, and energy absorption will drop immediately due to the localized stress concentration. And next factor is number of fabric layers. So, it is obvious if we increase the number of layer, the ballistic limit will increase, energy absorption will increase, but at the same time the mass of the total structure will increase which will result uncomfortable sensation. So, the fabric which we are making from a fiber with different characteristics that will affect the impact behavior. So, effect of fiber properties on impact behavior this diagram shows here, here projectile is striking on the surface of the fabric and that will result 
the longitudinal wave and the speed of this wave the longitudinal wave in the side wave that wave is expressed in terms of initial modulus of fiber and density of fiber which means that c equal to initial modulus divided by density to the power half. So, under root E by P where E is initial modulus that means, if the initial modulus of fiber is high that will result higher speed of longitudinal wave and higher density of fiber will result lower speed of longitudinal wave. So, to have very high the transmission of wave we need high modulus fiber with low density. So, our target should be having high C value that is high modulus fiber with lowest density. Kanif who deduced a dimensionless fiber property which is termed as u which is given by u equal to sigma epsilon by 2 rho multiplied by this c value that is under root e by rho whereas, sigma is tensile strength of fiber epsilon is tensile strain of fiber Young's modulus rho density and this p here it is a specific toughness. So, this total value this delta sorry sigma e 2 rho this value is known as specific toughness of fiber. So, u is effectively product of specific toughness and c that is speed of longitudinal wave. Higher the e value this u value higher is the effectivity of a particular fiber for ballistic protective clothing. So, these are the typical fiber properties we can get from the literature and using this basic fiber properties that is density, elastic modulus, tensile strength, strain to failure using this characteristics we can derive u value. So, this is the fiber property u value of different types of fibers and here single wall carbon nanotube A and B which are actually for future armor okay, with a very light high impact resistance fibers and higher u value indicates higher ballistic protection. So, where Kevlar we can see Kevlar 129 its u value is 672 where a single walled carbon nanotube B it has having 4326. So, if you compare it is typically 6 to 7 times 7 times more than the normal Kevlar. So, these are future armor. Now, let us see the factors related to projectile properties which affect the impact resistance. The projectile geometry is extremely important. So, there are different types of projectile shapes. 
hemispherical, conical, fragmented or flat that is available projectile shape and pointed bullet causes severe action. Okay. So, these are the different uh, shapes hemispherical tip, conical tip, fragmented tip and flat tip okay, different types of shapes. Then impact angle is also important, low impact angle properties actually this is the angle with the surface and this is the projectile. So, low impact angle projectile it affect the sliding and more frictional effect. So, it if the angle is low the projectile instead of penetration it will slide. So, impact angle between 30 degree to 45 degree lesser time for energy dissipation presence of frictional effect and impact angle of 90 degree that there will be only peripheral area is under contact and no sliding will be there. So, if it is vertically is impacting there will not be any sliding impact velocity is also important. So, as the impact velocity is increasing here in the x axis it is showing the impact velocity y axis it is showing the energy absorbed as the impact velocity increases. So, initially the energy absorption will increase, but at very high impact velocity it drops because the projectile simply penetrates through the fabric without much energy absorption. Now, we will discuss the how to measure the performance of impact. There are different methods. So, ballistic evaluation techniques are dynamic impact test, weapon test which actually measures the residual velocity. So, after penetration what is the velocity remaining in the projectile that we measure. So, we will see the NIJ standards, then V 50 measurement the concept of V 50 measurement we will discuss and then back face signature. So, back face signature means the trauma level on the human body is assessed. So, first we will see the dynamic impact tester, this is a, a diagram of the instrument, okay. here it is a schematic representation of dynamic impact test instrument, where this is the impactor and tip of the impactor is here and this is the impactor here the fabric specimen is kept here and it is clamped this this is a clamp and this is the impactor tip and in from the top view we can see here this is a fabric specimen here striker and this is the clamp. Okay. So, outer jaw of 108 millimeter diameter, inner jaw of diameter 76 millimeter, striker diameter here it is a 13 millimeter. So, at the center it will it strikes at certain speed and we measure the energy absorbed and also the diameter of the hole created that we can also measure. Another test is that weapon test setup. This is weapon test where there are different screens, 
screen 1, screen 2, screen 3, screen 4, these are the different skin. So, four optical screens are used to measure the bullet velocity before and after the impact. So, different screens are used. So, we need to calculate the difference in speed for that we have to measure the speed of bullet before striking the fabric and the speed after it is penetrating through the fabric. So, this is the test system where this is screen 1, screen 2, screen 3 and screen 4 are there and this is the uh, fabric specimen. So, we can if we measure the speed between this before striking and after striking we can calculate the energy absorbed. So, this is the energy absorption by fabric can be calculated using impact velocity and residual velocity. So, these are the different sensors here. So, energy absorbed E equal to half m V i square initial velocity before impact minus V r square residual velocity. So, from there we can calculate the energy absorption and as far as NIJ standard 0101.04 ballistic baseline ballistic limit which is set as V 50 which is performed on one armor. So, the method is here no pass fail criteria is decided only the velocity which we try to find where the probability of penetration is 50 percent that is denoted as V 50. So, designed to statistically measure the penetration per performance a minimum of 12 shots per panel for type 1 to type 3 a of this ballistic vest including at least 5 partial penetration that is PP and 5 complete penetration should be there. Out of 12 shots we have to have at least 5 complete penetration and 5 partial penetration. Then arithmetic mean of 10 velocities. So, we have we will be changing the velocity from low velocity to high velocity to have 5 at least partial penetration and 5 complete penetration. So, we will take the arithmetic mean of all 10 velocities and they are tested in dry condition. So, the specimen should be in dry and clay backing should be there to measure the back face signature okay. that we will see shots fired from fixed distance to the target that is a 5 meter from the armor. So, at fixed distance the shots are fired at different speed. So, that the there are at least 5 complete penetration and 5 partial penetration takes place and where the 9 millimeter round nose that is hemispherical bullet are used. Okay. So, this is the velocity probability curve. So, as the velocity increases, so where velocity is a 0, so there is no penetration and 
as we increase the velocity the probability of penetration increases and when the velocity is say v 100 at that velocity there will be 100 percent penetration. So, if we plot the velocity versus probability of perforation, so we will get this type of plot and the velocity where the probability is 50 percent that velocity is known as V 50 and positions short for V 50 calculation these are the different positions where the bullets are being shot and back face signature we can get this test is that the back face signature is a measure of blunt trauma experienced due to non perforating bullet. So, bullets are not being penetrating through the fabric structure and that will create a blunt trauma at the back side. This is a critical aspect of ballistic evaluation as it determines the internal injury to vital organs during ballistic impact. So, that that back face signature is extremely important to be evaluated. BFS is obtained by measuring the maximum depth of deformation. So, that if it is our body at which depth up to which depth the bullet will have impact that can be measured. So, maximum depth of deformation of the armor panel impacted by non perforating bullet on the backing material. So, we will have a backing material. So, that the depth of deformation we can measure the analysis of the result should be done as per the NIJ standard. So, this is the back face ok. So, and the depth we can measure ok. Back face signature it is a depth of the depression made in the backing material this yellow color this is the backing material created by non perforating projectile impact ok. Maximum tolerance limit is 44 millimeter as per NIJ standards the this maximum depth should be 44 millimeter. This non penetrating injury resulting from the rapid deformation of armors covering the body is called behind armor blunt trauma BABT and that will indicate the level of injury which our the person who is wearing the uh, vest will have will face this. Now, let us see the type of deformation which take place in hard body armor and soft body armor. In hard body armors, the deformation if it penetrates and the, the particles, this particles will be coming out from the other side. That is why spell liner is provided so that it stops this particles to come out from the structure. So, this is the first stage once it is striking the particles are coming out this is a ceramic hard body armor and this is the base and after certain time next stage this is the stage where the base will have deformation ok and there will be particles. Now, if we calculate the deflection produced by the impact this is the actual deflection ok this is the delta is the actual de deflection. So, P which is force applied for deflection 
can be expressed in terms of delta multiplied by 48 e i divided by l cube, where e is the modulus of elasticity of the material, i is the moment of inertia. So, we can calculate the force applied for the deflection, okay. the maximum deflection is delta. And if we want to measure the work done, work done, so in that case the force multiplied by deflection, although the deflection maximum deflection is delta, but in the extreme side end the deflection is 0. So, we can take the mean value as delta by 2. So, work done will be P delta by 2. So, that can be written as delta square 24 E i by L q. So, from there we can calculate the work done during penetration or during impact in the hard body armor. And if h is denoted as before the distance between the fall between the impact so, this is the h. So, this is the distance fallen before impact. The equation for determining the delta is this is the way. So, w multiplied by h plus delta h is the initial distance and delta is the deflection and w is the weight of impactor. This is the total work done and equal to delta square 24 E i by L q. So, from here we can calculate the deflection of the panel. So, by knowing all these parameters as far as hard body armors we can calculate the deflection, but in soft body armor it depends on many other factors. So, these are the schematic representation. So, gradually the impactor is impacting on the material and deflection is taking place, but if the velocity is very high it may sometime penetrate through the structure. This is the only one layer we are talking about and during this penetration the speed of this impactor reduces and this at this speed it will strike the next layer. So, in this way after certain time the this impactor will be actually it will stop inside the structure. So, this is the type of representation first layer, second layer, third layer. So, there are different layers. So, it is penetrating through one layer, then second layer after certain time there will be accumulation of layers, next layers. So, it will ultimately stop in between these structures. So, as we have seen that this will create an wave and that speed of this wave depends on the properties of fiber. So, as a bullet proof vest is not solid, the bullet will not instantaneously be stopped. So, it will not be stopped instantly, rather it will travel through the vest, but not actually penetrate it completely. Okay. It will initially penetrate through few layers, but it will not be penetrating completely. This means the wearer will still feel impact of the bullet. So, that due to this deformation the wearer will feel the impact of bullet and which will be actually blunt trauma 
and which may not be life threatening. So, approaches to reduce the bulk in soft body armors. So, we have seen that in soft body armor we can use a number of layers say 30, 30, 40 layers that will effectively increase the bulk of the body armor. So, there are different approaches which reduces the bulk, these are development of resin fabric composites, application of 3D oven fabrics, application of non oven fabrics as cushion layer, incorporation of carbon nanotubes or nanofibers in fabrics and application of shear thickening fluid in fabrics. This application of shear thickening fluids in fabrics are having very positive results, they have uh, very perfect bullet proof characteristics. So, we will discuss this shear thickening fluid aspects little bit. So, first we must understand what is shear thickening fluid, these are basically two phase concentrated dispersion, phase 1 which is solid phase which consists of nano or sub micron particle and phase 2 is that liquid phase which consists of a medium or carrier fluid which carries the particles in dispersed condition. Now, if you see the mechanism of shear thickening fluid is that the shear thickening is a property which shows significant increase in velocity above critical sorry viscosity. So, this is the viscosity. So, shear thickening is that as we increase the shear rate shear thickening fluid will result significant increase in viscosity above a critical shear rate. So, this is the critical shear rate which transforms the shear thickening fluid into a material which is definitely solid like. So, this here it will be like solid. So, this is the shear thickening fluid as we increase the shear rate initially there will be shear thinning. So, viscosity is reducing at lower shear rate, but as we increase the shear rate after critical shear rate this particles will get agglomerated and form solid like material and this although it is a fluid at certain rate above certain rate it will behave like a solid material. This is shear thickening point. So, shear thickening fluid treatment has been shown to improve impact resistance of Kevlar fabric. So, if we use shear thickening fluid we can get effective characteristics with less number of layers, it can improve flexibility and comfort characteristics as we use less number of fabric layers. So, this curve shows that shear rate in the x axis, shear stress in the y axis. For a Newtonian fluid the shear stress and shear strain they are proportional, okay. so that will have constant so straight line. So, this is the value viscosity remains constant. So, for Newtonian fluid, but for non Newtonian fluid the viscosity 
may increase with the increase in shear rate or may decrease with the increase in shear rate. If it decreases, then the fluid is known as shear thinning and if it increases, the viscosity increases, this will be shear thickening. So, this principle is being used to develop ballistic protective clothing with lower mass, higher flexibility and higher comfort characteristics. So, we have come to the end of this session. Thank you. Thank you for present hearing. Thank <laughs> you.